Hari champs, my name is Mohit and people uh, in this part new before I begin before I explain before I dig deeper and before I uh, do everything from scratch I would like to refresh your memories and start off again with the browser preview uh, let's take it up in Firefox alrighty people so <coughs> Alrighty, so this is the uh, animated drop down menu, and uh, as you hover over the different links, they changed the background color over a specified uh, time period. Right, they even drop down and collapse back uh, within a specified time period. It's a dual speed uh, menu bar, people, it drops down slower and collapses a little faster. Uh, mind you, the, the background color change again does not happen uh, instantly it happens uh, through the transition property over a specified time period obviously which you can alter and you can even play uh, around with the background color and the foreground colors too if you so wish to do so alright uh, I can uh, you know instead of uh, using the background color in my transition property on a hover the changes I can change something else too let me show you a different variation right now let me go to the drop down dot CSS the CSS separate CSS file that's actually linked to the uh, original uh, document and if I go to the rule uh, again let me tell you people I'm gonna do the whole project from scratch the HTML and the CSS from the very beginning don't worry but I'm gonna show you another variation if I go to the rule in line number 43 menu ULLIA hover right and instead of changing the background color on a hover let's uh, let's include a box shadow okay so shift along the x-axis 0 px uh, 0 or no shift along the y 50 px this is the the name of the color and I would want the shadow to be inset so instead of the background color which I'm gonna disable I would want the box shadow of the type inset to change on a hover let's see uh, the effect Okay, first of all, let me apply a comment, a CSS comment to the background. And I'm no longer changing the background, but I'm changing the box shadow over 0.5 seconds. So this is the little bit of change to the code that I need to make. Let's save the document up. Let's say file and save all. And uh, bring up Cro uh, Firefox. Let's uh, refresh the document. And let's hover. Notice the way the things, you know, act now. So you see, uh, it's more dramatic now, isn't it? Or I can even have another variation going instead of, uh, you know, the color, the bluish color dropping along the x-axis. I can even have it drop along the y-axis. So let's make this 0, 200 px out here, 0 px along the y-axis. Let's change the color to a darkish color. And uh, let's save the dock the changes up control s bring the browser up let's uh, refresh let's see the change okay this time you know the the color strip or the inset shadow is running from left to right instead of dropping from the top all right so this is yet another variation <coughs> So, uh, guys, as promised, let's understand the whole project uh, from the very beginning. Let me tell you, I've used the transition property time and again. The transition property is a CSS3 property, which means that you might need to include uh, vendor prefixes like dash mouse dash dash or dash dash uh, uh, webkit dash for older browsers, which you might not need to include for the newer ones but for simplicity sake people I have not used and I won't be using uh, the trans transition property with all its variations and vendor prefixes you will need to check the compatibility yourself you can easily check the uh, the compatibility with different browsers of the property transition property CSS3 and accordingly apply the vendor prefixes so instead of saying just transition you can say dash webkit dash transition whatever whatever right that's the only change that you need to make and I'll I'll keep my code simple I'll just use the uh, transition property since uh, most of my browsers you know all my browsers are actually updated uh, I won't need I don't need to actually do that uh, I I ha just have IE 9 and it actually doesn't work in IE the way it should 
<coughs> because the transition is not supported out there let me preview it up in IE2 so what's the loss the loss is uh, minimal people you just don't get to see the uh, you know the transition happening but everything else just happens the way it should so where you see the transition actually happening it's a bonus and where it doesn't there's no loss as you can see that's the way you should be using CSS3 people already um, and I, I I'm just using IE9 I, I'm sure most of you may be using IE10 uh, IE11 and uh, in fact I, I know for sure that uh, you know the hate I group is a big one so you really need not care about that all right so let's uh, let's begin and do everything from scratch so let's say a file in a new HTML let's say I would want the doc type to be HTML5 let's say create all right uh, <coughs> first things first the title of the document people any made it menu file save any mated menu dd drop down that's that's drop down all right okay so even before i do the uh css let's simply do the html first and understand the html people um, i'm going to use send coding it's a code assist plugin that's free uh, you know available free off the internet you can just google it up uh, you know the uh, it's you can uh, install it as an extension for Dreamweaver, and once you do that, people out here you'll be you know you'll get this entries encoding and these different uh, options. But these options will not be available to you unless and until you actually install encoding. It's a code assist plugin. All right, it just allows you to code super quick, people, and you will uh, see what I mean by that. Okay, now the first things first. I would want a div, let's say, with an ID of menu containing a ul an unordered list which uh, further contains an li all right now you may be surprised what exactly is happening out here if i press control and comma like so i get what i needed to see all right uh In fact, let me revert for a minute, for a moment. Let's say Control Z to revert. And for the uh, list item or the li item, I would also want to have an anchor tag going, people. Okay. With href set to let's say home dot html. Make sure that the cursor is blinking at the extreme right, people. Now, this is the way you write Zen coding. And uh, for people who do not understand uh, how to write Zen, Zen coding, uh, there are so many tutorials available on the on YouTube itself. And uh, I have uh, posted uh, quite a number of them, so you can ch actually check. And then I'm going to press Control plus comma and see the kind of, you know, see the way the code has actually changed. Right, you can see that uh, you have a bullet out here. So basically, we've, we've just managed to create an li inside a ul inside a div with an ID of menu. Yep, this was this is the code that I've actually dropped in using Zen coding. Uh, again, I would I would advise you if you do not understand how to write the code uh, in Zen coding, please check out a few tutorials or simply code out the way you're used to doing so. All right. So I've created uh, an li which is actually a link and uh, I'm gonna go out here this is uh, an edit point and then let's say I would want it to be home alrighty now people I'm gonna drop in a nested ul list inside the opening and the closing list tags okay so we have the opening list tag out here we have uh, it close out here we have the anchor tag open and close out here itself right keep looking at the changes that happen out here people and then once I'm actually out here I would want another uh, an ordered list containing an li okay which contains an anchor tag which uh, further has the href attribute which equals let's say some 
link a dollar sign uh, a dollar sign and let's say how many list items do I actually want mm, let's say into four into four so basically a ul containing li's four li's which in turn contain anchor tags with uh, the href attribute pointing to some links and why we have used the dollar sign will become very clear very soon make sure that the cursor is blinking at the extreme right people press control plus comma okay now this is the way the code actually expands so you have the nested ul list out here so this is the main ul okay which closes out here then we have li which closes out here then we have a nested ul list like this which has four li items and uh, notice people how the code looks like right now have a look out here okay i'm gonna fill in the edit points people to create uh, some links the dollar sign was used to increment the uh, links link one link two link three link four okay let me just uh, fill in the edit points so link one out here link two out here link three out here and obviously link four goes out here and this is the way the changes actually reflect very cool just removing those extra lines that I don't really need okay so this is the way the code actually looks like right now uh, now let's start inserting some CSS people let's say file and a save okay uh, let's say file new CSS right let's save the CSS as uh, let's say dd dot CSS drop down dot CSS basically okay let's get back to the animated menu dd dot HTML drop down dot HTML and link it up with the dd dot CSS file how do you do that it's very simple people again I'm gonna use encoding so link colon CSS and expand it using control and a comma and for the href attribute I'm gonna say dd.css so through the link tag the relationship attribute the type attribute and the href attribute using media all uh, I'm pointing to this CSS file so this is the way you'll actually connect your CSS along to the HTML document let's say file and a save all very very cool okay so now my uh, CSS file is connected to the uh, HTML file you can see the source code and the CSS file are actually connected okay now the time is ripe to uh, start defining uh, my CSS rules first things first people I'm gonna click out here where you see div with an ID on menu I'm gonna go out here and say plus so uh, the new uh, CSS rule dialog box will pop up okay I'm creating an ID rule and uh, choose where your rule definitions will be defined it will be defined inside the external style sheet the dd.css file which is just fine I'm gonna keep the selector name the same and I'm gonna say okay alright uh, I'll straight away head to the uh, box category I'm gonna define a width of 804 simply because I know all my uh, I know my dimensions okay uh, at the same time I'm gonna say 50 px of margin top and 50 px of margin bottom but the left and right margins I'm gonna keep at auto I would see once you define a div and then you set the left and the right margins to auto it automatically centers that div so basically I would want my a menu to sit inside that div and be centered across the page so this is the technique and and and, and uh, you know in from the top and the bottom I would want uh, some cushion so in fact I don't even need the bottom 
uh, margin seriously but it's okay all right and uh, <coughs> then I would want to go to the positioning category and I'm setting the position to a relative why am I actually doing that because I would want to set a children item to be absolute at at some stage all right so this takes care of the the first rule I'm gonna say okay right and uh, if I go to dd.css you can actually see the width 804 margin top 50 margin uh, right auto margin uh, bottom 50 margin left auto position relative okay let's save the file up let's get back to the HTML document very cool now people I'm gonna click out here in line number uh, 11 I'm gonna go back to and go back and click on this uh, plus button now this new rule is targeting UL within menu again it's it's a compound rule people it's a descendant rule okay this is a descendant of the div menu div with an ID of menu and again it's getting saved in the external style sheet dd.css I'm gonna say okay okay uh, I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to the box category I'm gonna set the padding at 0 and margin at 0 for all the four sides at the same time I'm gonna go to the list category I'm gonna set the list style type to none this will take care of uh, all the padding and the default paddings in the margins and the bullets that uh, always come along with the list items UL list I'm gonna say okay and notice the kind of change that has actually happened so all the links link 1 2 3 and 4 have actually dropped below home okay now where I say some link uh, 1 some link 2 some link 3 people uh, I, since I don't have real links ready so I'm just just using some pseudo links you know these are all pseudo links I don't have any HTML you know home dot HTML ready or some link 1 dot uh, it should actually be dot HTML but just for simplicity sake I'm, I'm just saying some link one all right so this is the way things look like right now okay now if I go to the DD uh, dot CSS file this is the new rule that has been generated okay let's save the file up let's get back to the animated uh, menu HTML document <coughs> this time people I'm gonna click out here uh, where we have the first li item nested inside the ul uh, list in fact here in line number 12 I'm gonna click on the new CSS rule plus button again it's a compound rule people the contextual selector has been set to a compound because it's a descendant so basically targeting li within ul within uh, hash menu okay again it's getting saved in the external style sheet people not uh, it's not an internal or an embedded rule this is the way to go always uh, have an external style sheet going already so dd.css is where it's gonna get saved I'm gonna say okay all right first things first people I'm gonna set the float to a, a left people so float to a left and I'm gonna say apply notice the kind of changes that have actually taken place out here you see the link 1 link 2 link 3 have actually uh, are now actually rubbing shoulders that's the first change and at the same time people um, I'm gonna go to the positioning category and and set the position to a relative and say okay alright notice the kind of changes uh, that are taking place uh, that have taken place out here uh, actually will go back and make a small edit I don't need to set the menu relative I can actually do away with this what I need to uh, set relative was actually uh, this rule menu ul li so this needs to be relative just making that small correction people files uh, let's say save all all right very very cool so notice the way uh, let's actually bring up the browser let's refresh the browser and let's see uh, how do things look like right now in fact I'll need to take up another browser preview in Firefox this time okay so uh, we have the home out here link 1 link 2 link 3 and link 4 rubbing shoulders so doesn't look like uh, you know 
<laughs> an animated drop down menu so far but uh, do not worry it, it will uh, look that way very uh, soon okay now I'm gonna move on to the most important rule people I'm gonna click out here where we have the anchor tag I'm gonna go to this uh, new CSS rule button okay now this new rule is targeting uh, a within li within ul within hash menu div alright again it's a compound rule it's a descendant long descendant rule people again it's getting saved inside the external style sheet and this is by far the most important rule people I'm gonna say okay okay I'm gonna choose my font family out here let's say I would want to go with Georgia or whatever you would want to uh, choose and uh, let's go with a font size of 110 percent right mm. <coughs> I don't want my anchors or my uh, you know my links to actually be underlined so I'm gonna set the text decoration to be a none since I'm gonna choose a darkish background I'm gonna set the font color to be a white okay let's move on to the background category let's set the background to be hash triple three uh, color format three digit hex let's make it hash triple three mm. let's move on to the block category people I'm gonna set the uh, you know width and the height but that o can only happen if the display property has been set to a block okay uh, at the same time I would want to center align my text uh, let's say okay and let's uh, let's see how things look like right now I'll come back to the rule and uh, make a few more changes okay so let's uh, bring the browser up let's first say save all let's bring the browser up okay okay alrighty so this is the way things look like right now let's let's uh, get back to the same rule people and again I would want to change it to the hex format three digit hex white okay uh, let me go to the box category people since I've set the display to be a block I can actually start uh, using the width and the height so let's say a width of uh, 200 px a height of 50 px right let's say okay and uh, notice the kind of changes that have actually happened out here so we have uh, menu blocks now you know link 1 link 2 are actually set in blocks they have a width and a height and the display property has been set to a block basically that allows you to give the width and the height they are no longer in line uh, level elements they are block level elements now <coughs> okay uh, very very cool let's move ahead and uh, let's see what else we need to do yep uh, if I go back to the same rule and make sure that the line height is the same as the uh, menu height notice that this link actually dropped they center align themselves vertically to not only horizontally let's show you a browser preview this time in Firefox <coughs> excuse me alright so this is the way things look like right now very cool I just need some borders now that's all I need to do cool as I said this is the most important rule people this is where you'll make the most edits and I'm gonna go to the border category uh, let's come off these checkpoints and then I'm only gonna set the right in the bottom border people I'm gonna make sure it's inset so just a sun sun 3d effect people inset and let's say thin thin okay and let's say a color of Mm. Yep. Hash nine CF. All right. I'm actually sorted, and uh, let's take up yet another browser preview at this point. <coughs> okay. 
so you see our menu is actually taking shape and uh, very well let's move ahead alrighty again I'm gonna go out here where we have the first anchor tag I'm gonna click on this plus button now this is the same rule as the last times you see again it's a compound rule targeting A within LI within UL within menu hash menu but I'm gonna just make a little bit of a change out here I would want the hover state uh, this time so rule for the hover state again it's getting saved in the external dd.css file let's say ok ok uh, I'm gonna make two changes out here the font size if you remember earlier without the hover state was 110 percent I'm gonna make it 130 percent so that's gonna uh, make that subtle change of the font size on a hover that's the first change people uh, the second change that I'm gonna make is <coughs> excuse me uh, is to the background color so instead of the uh, hash triple three let's make it hash nine zero zero I'm gonna say okay and uh, again at this point I would like to show you a browser preview after saving the CSS file so notice the way the font size actually changes uh, uh, around 20% increase people and the background color changes too but in a snap you see the changes are happening in a snap and I can actually use the transition property people I can use the transition property for both the the uh, you know the background color and the font size in a manner that I'm about to show you so that it actually happens over a specified time period okay so I'm gonna go to the dd.css file and as I said this is the longest uh, rule the most important rule I'm gonna go to this uh, the bottom of the most important rule people which is uh, menu ul lia okay and then I'm gonna use the transition property in a manner in this manner so I would want my background to change over uh, half a second and my font size to change over 200 milliseconds or two seconds alright so I'm using um, multiple transitions which are actually comma separated yes that's possible and uh, which means that my transitions uh, of the background color and the font size will not happen in a snap but will happen over a specified time period again for simplicity sake people I've, I'm skipping the um, dash webkit dash 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 uh, mustache vendor prefixes which are actually needed for very old browsers if you haven't uh, upgraded your browsers you might actually need to use them okay you can ch do the compatibility check yourself but for simplicity sake again as I've uh, said time and again I'm skipping it and uh, let's uh, at this point once again bring the browser up uh, let's refresh the browser and let's see the changes so you see this time the changes actually do happen but the color changes uh, the background color changes over half a second and uh, 0.2 seconds for the font size the subtle change of the font size and the radical or the dramatic change of the background color happens over some time period now since I've used the transition property very very cool okay next up people I'm gonna make a big change through a very small rule I'm gonna click out here we have the uh, nested UL opening tag that's in line number 13 I'm gonna go out here and click to create a new CSS rule uh, again it's a compound descendant rule people quite clearly so the contextual selector is a compound uh, targeting UL within ally within UL within menu so nested UL and again uh, the rule is getting saved in the external style sheet people so dd.css I'm gonna say ok and the only change that I need to make is to the positioning category I'm gonna set the position to an absolute if you remember I had earlier uh, set my ally to relative now you see if I set the uh, nested ul to absolute what is gonna happen so uh, an absolutely positioned element within uh, you know a relative element I'm gonna say ok and uh, you see the links actually drop down below each other instead of being left and right no, they're not rubbing shoulders anymore you know they are uh, uh, sitting on top of each other that's that's a big change I'm gonna save the document up so this is how things behave when you set uh, you know an element uh, absolute uh, in a relative element this is the way your you know your bullets uh, your your list is gonna behave okay so exactly what I actually wanted to see very, very cool very nice uh, we have already run into 30 minutes in this tutorial just few more minutes people just uh, hang on 
hold on to your seat belts we are almost done okay next up people I'm gonna show you two more important rules this is where I got halted uh, you know when I, I had to put on my thinking cap and think deep and long for you right let's see how I managed to get the so the drop down action is gonna happen out here people let's see how I managed to do that uh, I'm gonna go out here uh, in line number 14 so I'm getting inside uh, a with an allies you know which are actually in the nested ul uh, tag i'm going to click on this plus button i'm going to get a big long descendant rule people again it's, a, it's the contextual selector is automatically set to compound obviously a with an ally with an ul with an ally with an ul with an hash menu has to be a compound rule it looks compound doesn't it uh, at the face value itself again it's, you know the new rule will be getting saved in the external style sheet people uh, dd.css I'm gonna say okay and I'm gonna go to the uh, positioning category I'm gonna set the visibility to a hidden and let's say apply okay that's the first change so I'm, I'm setting the visibility of my uh, link tags hidden uh, I'm gonna go to let's say the box category I'm gonna set the height of my anchor tags to a 0 px I'm doing everything that I would I can to actually hide it again let's say apply okay um, I'm gonna go to the um, I wanna set the opacity to a 0.52 but that that has to be hand coded alright and uh, let's say okay at this point and uh, let's say file save I'll we'll take up a browser preview bring the browser up uh, let's refresh and people press to all the children uh, items have actually when it's simply because the children anchor tags uh, you know I've set the visibility uh, to a hidden the height to a zero there's no way you can actually see them right at the same time I'm gonna set the opacity to a point five so I'm gonna go to the dd.css rule and uh, I'm gonna add opacity at uh, 0.5 so 50 percent opacity again opacity is a CSS3 property people and uh, let's <coughs> move on to the next rule people so let's save the changes up let's say save all let's get back to the HTML document the tutorial has uh, run into 32 minutes 33 minutes just a few couple of minutes more to go people I think so alright uh, next people what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the same you know I'm gonna click out here in uh, just as the last time in the nested ul tag A anchor tag within li with the nested ul tag I'm gonna click on this plus button again we get the same uh, rule as the last time but I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna say when you hover over the first li okay then I would want my anchors within li within ul to be affected in a way that I'm about to show you again it's a long descendant rule it's a compound rule getting saved in the external style sheet people and uh, so when somebody hovers over this li you see this this li I would want these anchors to be affected so when you hover over home I would want these allies to be affected I you see a link 1 link 2 link 3 link 4 to be affected in a way that I'm about to show you let's say okay okay I'm gonna undo the changes so basically if you remember I set the visibility uh, hidden so I'm gonna make it visible once again if you also remember I set the uh, height to be a zero I'm gonna set height back to 50 px that is the original height of the anchor tax people okay uh, I even need to reset the opacity to 1 but I'll hand code it out and I'm gonna say okay I'm gonna get to the dd.css rule and I'm gonna hand code out the opacity so just copy this from here I'm gonna paste this bit out here and I'm gonna reset the opacity to 1 okay let's save the changes controls s and uh, let's take up a browser preview at this point so <coughs> refresh okay notice when I actually hover over people the you know obviously the anchor tags regain their height to a 50 px they regain their opacity they regain their uh, visibility and they show up in this manner okay but uh, 
you see the drop down is actually happening in a snap and I don't want that you know the drop down I would want it to be subtle I'm gonna use the transition property once again people in a manner that I'm about to show you okay give me a sec I'm gonna copy a little bit of a code so that I can actually paste it here <coughs> so you need to go to this rule which is in line number um, 51 add the transition property I'm gonna say uh, transition all visibility height opacity everything over 0.2 seconds and uh, set the easing to be out easing basically is the progression of animation over time people the time uh, progression graph that's easing I'm gonna set the easing to be out so basically it'll, the animation will slow down towards the end I'm gonna go to this rule too and apply transition here too but this time over three seconds so basically the and you know the uh, drop down will happen at a dual speed uh, it, it collapses a little faster people to this state and opens up a little slower at this rate at this speed at this time 0.3s uh, 300 milliseconds I can even specify 300 ms instead of saying 0.3s okay I'm actually done I'm actually sorted people uh, let's save the changes up and bring the browser up let's refresh and see the way you know the drop down is actually happening I'm almost done people I just need to have a uh, few uh, I just need to copy the code a few more times and uh, we'll be done we'll see the end product very soon alrighty so let's apply the finishing touch let's get back to the HTML document people and very carefully let's copy a chunk of code like this so from so from li to li opening uh, li out here closing li out here making sure that you don't copy the opening and the closing ul tags within the uh, div with an idiom menu I'm gonna say control C okay and copy this uh, four times control V control V paste this uh, three more times actually okay and uh, see the way things look like right now you won't make much of a sense out here unless and until I show you in the browser how things look like so files let's say save all bring the, uh, Firefox up let's refresh and you see now we have a centered menu and uh, these are the changes that actually have taken place so looks like a very cool menu people alright uh, for simplicity sake I've just kept everything home 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 but you can obviously change that if I uh, you see uh, we have home out here if I go out here and just change this to uh, about us this is just a pseudo link people this is just a test menu so about dot HTML or whatever this would reflect in this manner so home about us and similarly you can make your uh, changes out here even for link 1 2 3 and 4 you can make the changes okay and uh, I told you that instead of using the you know the transition for the uh, background color I can even have it uh, set for um, box shadow <coughs> so I can say something like uh, box shadow again it's a CSS3 property I'm not using uh, any vendor prefixes just for simplicity sake uh, take a compatibility test and see if you actually need to include vendor prefixes like dash up kit dash 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 etc okay so along the uh, x-axis let's say I would want a shift of 200 px along the y-axis 0 px no shift out there let's say um, a shade or a color of 900 and I would want to set I would want it the you know the box shadow to be inset <coughs> and which means that uh, I'm gonna disable the background color for a minute like so just applying the uh, a CSS comment and instead of uh, you know applying the transition property to the background I just need to apply it to the box shadow like this so applying the transition to the box shadow over half a second and the font size 0.2 seconds so multiple transitions happening comma separated this is the syntax people let's save the document up let's bring the browser up and uh, refresh and let's see the kind of changes that are actually happening okay so you see that you know the uh, the color strip run from left to the right over half a second in this manner and instead of the uh, you know the 
horizontal shadow I can apply a vertical shadow too so instead of keeping this 200 arc I can keep this uh, 0 I can keep this uh, uh, 200 or I can apply them both together something like let's say a 50 px2 see what's gonna happen okay so let's say file and save and bring the browser up and uh, refresh you see you know the area gets filled up the menu area gets filled up both horizontally and vertically over a specified time period if you're not able to see it uh, quite clearly I can uh, actually increase the time so you can see it quite clearly let's go uh, let's go over two seconds <coughs> the tutorial has actually taken a lot longer than I anticipated it's over 40 minutes now okay see how slowly you see the transition actually happens but for the children item uh, it happens at a faster rate because uh, the transition property had been used once again you know at the bottom of the CSS file we can uh, obviously alter all that right so people uh, I hope you found this information useful I hope you like this tutorial and uh, I hope you'll thumb the video up you'll subscribe if you already haven't and uh, you'll keep coming back for more and more tutorials from me you have a good day and let me remind you that you can just uh, send me an email from my website qualitylessons.net to receive the assets absolutely free bye bye